Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my PE Power exam preparation course. In this lecture we are going to discuss instrument transformers. Instrument transformers belong to section 1 of the PE Power exam specification which is general power engineering and it is one of those few topics of the exam that are not referenced in the NCSP power reference handbook. Now when it comes to instrument transformers if you're already working in the industry you would have worked with instrument transformers as a power systems engineer you might have specified them you might have used them in protection and control as part of metering and so on so it is one of those topics which has a lot of practical application before we dive into the content i would really appreciate if you could like this video and click the bell icon and subscribe button if you haven't already done so Hello and welcome to part 2 of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of instrument transformers. I have specially designed this lecture to discuss a very important topic within instrument transformers which is burden. We will start this lecture with an introduction to burden, then we will look at standard burden ratings for current transformers and then standard burden ratings for voltage transformers. And at the end we will do some burden related calculations. So what is burden? Burden of an instrument transformer is defined as the impedance which is connected to the instrument transformer's secondary. And notice that I'm using a journal term instrument transformer because burden is applicable to both current transformers as well as the voltage transformers. So what does the burden include? Burden includes the transformer's own secondary impedance and that of the devices and connecting leads. So it is everything that is connected on the transformer's secondary, including the impedance of transformer's own secondary. IEEE expresses burden in terms of ohms, whereas IEC, which is the European counterpart of IEEE, if you can call it that, it expresses burden in volts amperes. IEEE standard C57.13 establishes standard burden ratings for CTs which are shown in this table. Now an important point to remember over here is that these ratings are applicable for 5 amps and 60 hertz systems only. So these are standard CT burden ratings with 5 amps secondaries. So how is burden designated? Burden is designated um, according to IEEE as B dash a number for current transformers. This is the designation for current transformers. And there are two different categories of burdens. There is a metering burden and then there is a relaying burden. And we will discuss this in more detail later on. So B-0.1. The number 0.1 signifies the total impedance. Okay, so the impedance is 0.1. Similarly, B1.8, you can see that the impedance, the burden is maximum allowable burden for this particular CT of this rating is 1.8. Similarly, when you're discussing the relaying burdens, you have B2, B4, B8, and so on. And that basically represents 2 ohms, 4 ohms, 8 ohms, and so on. Now, what about the volt ampere? As I mentioned, IEEE expresses burden in ohms, but you can see that over here, um, this table also shows volt amps. So how can you calculate volt amps? It's pretty simple. So we know that volt amps is VA and V is equal to IR. In, in this case, we are looking at impedance, so IZ, and A is actually equal to I as well. So I square Z. So when we are looking at a burden of 0 0.1, so this is 0 0.1 ohms, and the I will always be 5 amps in all of these cases, okay? So 5 square is 25, so 25 times 0 0.1 is 2.5 volt amps. So you can see over here. And you can verify all of these remaining numbers yourself as well. Just use the formula VA, where V is the voltage, A is the current, and split V into I times Z, and then substitute these values. IEEE standard C57.13 also establishes standard burden ratings for voltage transformers, which are shown in the table. On this lecture slide, these burden ratings are expressed for standard voltages, 120 volts and 69.3 volts at 60 hertz. So you can see that burden designation for voltage transformers is a bit different. It is alphabetical as opposed to B dash the impedance. 
and the burden impedances are actually not very neat number and they change depending on the voltage that you're looking at so for example a voltage transformer with the burden designation of w has an impedance of 1152 ohms a voltage transformer um, with a burden designation of m has a 69.3 volt burden rating of 137 ohms and so on we will also do some practice problems on the voltage transformer burden calculations shortly. Current transformer burden calculation. So as mentioned earlier, burden of an instrument transformer or the current transformer in this case is comprised of all the impedance that is connected on transformer secondary, which includes its own secondary resistance because we're dealing with non-ideal practical transformers. They don't have zero internal resistance transformers have internal resistance you will actually look at the equivalent circuit of transformers later on in the lecture in quite a bit of detail so just uh, remember that every transformer has resistance so on the secondary of the ct the transformer itself will have a secondary resistance so we need to include that plus the wire resistance so the secondary of the transformer will obviously be connected to a device or to a terminal somewhere so the resistance of that wire, which is connecting the CT to the device or the terminal and the impedance of the device. So if it's a relay, if it's a meter, whatever that device is, that device itself will also have impedance. So we have three pieces that we need to take care of. The secondary resistance, the wire resistance and the device impedance. Let us now take a look at a practice problem. In this problem, we are being asked to calculate the total burden of a 200 amp to 5 amp CT. And we are told that the CT secondary winding resistance is this much. The total cable resistance between the CT and the relay is this much. And the relay coil resistance, which is the impedance of the device, is this much. So as I mentioned earlier, the burden is comprised of the CT secondary resistance plus the wire resistance plus the device impedance. And all of these pieces are actually provided to us. We just need to simply add them up and the answer is 0 0.26 ohms. Let us now take a look at another practice problem in which we are being asked to express the burden in ohms. The burden is provided to us in volt amperes at 5 amps. So I previously showed you a very quick calculation where you could go from ohms to volt amperes. In this case, we are going to go from volt amperes to ohms. So the volt ampere is provided to us as 0.5 VA. And you know, volt ampere is basically voltage times the current. Voltage is I times R. So it basically means that it is equal to I square R. So I square R is given to us as 0.5. We know that the secondary current rating is 5 amps. So I square is actually 5 square. So R is simply equal to 0 0.5 divided by 25. 5 square is 25. And that will result in 0 0.02 ohms. Let us now take a look at a practice problem from the study guide for PE power. According to the problem statement, we are being asked to select the minimum burden rating necessary for accurate current measurement by a 200 to 5 amp current transformer which is connected to a 5VA relay with 50 foot long number 16 AWG wire which has an impedance of 4.5 milli ohms per feet. So there's quite a bit of detail in this problem and we have to systematically process this information. Maybe some details are relevant, maybe some details are not relevant but um, we will use our burden formula and try and include the necessary details in order to calculate the minimum burden rating. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out the impedances that we're working with. So we obviously have the impedance or the resistance of the wire, right? So we know the length of the wire is 50 foot and we know the per foot impedance. So 50 feet multiplied by 4.5 milli ohms per feet is equal to 0 0.225 ohms. And the relay impedance is actually provided to us or the relay burden is actually provided to us in the form of VA. We know that it's a 5 MCT. 
So we will just do the conversion from VA to ohms, which is 0 0.2 ohms. So the total secondary impedance is equal to relay impedance plus the wire impedance. Now you might be wondering why didn't we include the transformer secondary impedance? There's no way for us to guess the transformer secondary impedance. And if you run into this type of a situation, you can assume that that impedance is negligible for the given transformer. Okay. Otherwise the problem statement would have provided you and there's no way for us to, you know, figure it out with the details that are provided. So we will simply consider the relay impedance as well as the wire impedance as the total secondary impedance. So we will add 0 0.2 ohms with 0 0.225 ohms and that ends up being 0 0.425 ohms. Now the question is which transformer would you select? Which burden rating? Now as I mentioned earlier the IEEE standard that we looked at actually specifies standard burden ratings and 0.425 is not a standard burden rating. So we will go one step higher and select B0.5, which will allow us um, burden of 0.50, which is greater than 0.425. And it will be an acceptable solution. It will be actually a better solution than 0.425. So this is another interesting thing to note that the burden rating are standardized. And one of the things that I mentioned in the previous lecture was that an advantage of using the CTs and VTs are that they come in standard ratings and the codes and standards are actually uh, based on those uh, typical ratings. So you can see that we didn't have a 0 0.425 ohm rating, but that was not an issue because we can always go one size up. So B0.5 current transformer, uh, option C is the correct answer for this problem. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I'm confident that you will also benefit from the full course that contains more than 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES P Power Exam specification for the computer-based testing format. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full-length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. Once you enroll, I will schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with you to develop a custom study plan based on your schedule and time constraints. On top of all of this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video for you.